everyone, a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tukele. In studio with me, I'm joined by Peter Armitage and Brian Rudd, both from Anchor Capital. And they are experts today as we talk about Walt Disney, the company. Now, as soon as I heard this particular phrase, I thought, what, cartoon characters and maybe <laughs> theme parks in uh, the U.S. as well as Paris? But there's more to this company, right? Very much so. Um, the business is basically made up of about five divisions, um, the biggest of that being networks. And not necessarily familiar to the, the local market, but CNB, uh, ESPN is the, the biggest component within that, biggest sports uh, channel in the world. I don't know that. Um, so it's a, a very big part, but that being said, that part is actually decreasing. Then they've got the studios, they've got the parks, um, then they've also got interactive media, and then of course the consumer and the merchandise. Um, mm -hmm. So a very big business, a lot of different components in it and one that's very much starting to even out with the contribution from those components. Mm -hmm. If we look at some of the metrics that are involved, obviously the cap market cap of this particular business and uh, how the share price is trading? It's a, it's a very big business. I mean, looking at about 185 billion US dollars. Um, so it's not a small business. It has grown dramatically over the last five years. Um, it had a, a really downtime after the crisis in 2009. Mm -hmm. People weren't driving to the parks, people weren't buying, people weren't going to the movies. So they had a very tough time in 2009, but from that point onwards, this has been on a, a very good trajectory upwards. Um, so big business, strong business. Um, if we look at some of the metrics, it's on a forward 20 times earnings. Um, so not the cheapest you're ever gonna find, um, but in the context of the world at the moment, you are having to pay up for a company that's actually growing. Um, and this is a company that's growing. Not much of a dividend yield, 1.1%. Um, they only pay up 20% of earnings. The rest gets reinvested back into the business. And you know, it's a business that does need a lot of cash. They're continually having to buy rights to different shows, to different um, sports events. Uh, they use a lot of the, the, the money internally. Um, and then a return on equity in excess of 17%. Um, that also has grown from a, a low base around 11% in 2009. So sure. Good business, strong business. Strong business. Peter, if I'm not mistaken, you do have two daughters. They might like the characters, but do you like this particular stock in the business case here? Well, two daughters who love Frozen and <laughs> that side of it, and okay. a son who's fixated with uh, the Marvel Universe. Yes. Ah. Um, you know, I've still got to watch the new Avengers with him. He wanted to watch it with his, with his friends before me. Uh, but that's heading for a billion dollars. You know, so they've got... Uh, you know, part of part of the story is owning fantastic brands. Mm -hmm. I read a, a, an interesting article a few weeks ago, which made me think: identifying the strongest brand in the world. So, you know, if you were to leave Earth for 20 years and come back, what brand would you have confidence would still be there? And they identified B uh, Disney as as the strongest brand in the world. You know, it's got enduring characteristics. It's uh, it's 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 got uh, products and characters which which will stay forever and you know the 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 channel that it's got into particularly the u.s consumer but increasingly mm -hmm. the global consumer um is that they'll always and and when somebody else is creating something special they buy it and put it in their mix they've made a few strategic acquisitions over the years um and they've they've got you know in in the whole as the world changes and technology changes the way that media is consumed and the consumer interacts um, the people who've got the content are, are probably best placed because no matter what channel is used um, for people to, to reach that content, ultimately it's the content that's of value. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you've told us about the split very briefly, uh, Brian, but you wanted to add something else there. No, I was just going to say, this is, is very much probably the greatest content play in the, go in the global market. Um, from the ability to touch pretty much every consumer that's out there, um, whether it be from an entertainment perspective, going to a movie, or dad staying at home and watching the Super Bowl and, and that. So mm. it's, they, have a, they control a, a great part of the content out there. And as Peter's already alluded to, very, very quality brands. Um, they recently bought Lucas Films, so the Star Wars series. Everybody knows Star Wars, now it's part of Disney. Um, it, the, the Marvel series, so the Avengers, um, Iron Man, these sort of things. This has all come within the Disney um, group now. And these are quality brands within this business that will drive it going forward. Looking at the share price perspective, the P-E ratio of this particular stock, does it look, as you mentioned, fairly expensive versus its peers? You know, if we look at it on a, a forward basis, it's been on a, a great run. If we, if we look at the graph, the blue line is the share price running up there. And it's been on a, a great run for a number of years now. And the multiple has got a little high. Um, but if we look at that on a forward basis onto a 20, that brings it down towards its it's long-term average. Um, this company has never been a, a 10 multiple, and you're not likely to ever pick it up on a 10 multiple. Why is that <laughs> it's, 
I think it's a quality business that's got the growth built into it. Um, it's it demands a multiple to it, and it is a as I say, to a certain extent, they're now starting to build in a few defensive qualities um, because they were aware of when things went wrong in 2009. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to be a, a cheap stock. Um, if you can buy it on a, a share when the share price pulls back a little bit to get a little bit of a, a better multiple, that would be the recommendation there. But I think it's still a, a definitely a quality business. And yes, you're paying up, but you're paying up for 15% growth, mm -hmm. which again is not bad. Let's touch on that growth and uh, where we're expecting it to come from, Peter. Uh, are we looking at new markets or new products, or is it really uh, the power behind the content and how it's delivered? So it, it's the content and the theme behind it that, that drives it. Um, you need a good management team to leverage off that. So parks and resorts, you know, they're, they're Shanghai, and then they'll, they'll open more around the world. So employing some of that capital and the business gets bigger. In terms of the, uh, the, 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 the films, they'll carry on adding to it and retain their market share. Um, and, and as basically you've got these products that are going into a growing global consumer base. Mm. So if you have glo global GDP growth of 3 or 4% per year, um, particularly in places like China, we would imagine more people consume their product. Um, so there's some natural growth built, in built into the strongest brands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you expect that to continue, Brian? Yes, um, you know, if we go and look at the, where they're going into now at the moment, um, there's a big drive into China. Um, Asia previously was a very small percentage of the business. That's now growing up to 8%, looking to grow even more. Um, and just around that, they, they opened a new Disney store um, at the beginning of May. And they had people queuing for three hours before the store opened. Mm. They eventually closed the queue when it was a mile long, one and a half kilometer long queue to get into a store. The store was actually open for an hour and they had to close it because they could not let any more people in. Um, they're looking at the Shanghai um, amusement park in 2016. So you've got Disneyland in the US and Florida and you've got the Euro Disney. Now they're looking at the Asian market for that. So Asia growing it, even if we pull that back to 6%, they're driving consumerism in, in China. This is playing directly into their hands. Um, they've opened up the, the movie space in China. Everybody now knows who Frozen is, knows who the Avengers are. They want the merchandise. They want him to go with. So I think there's definitely a strong growth behind this business and should continue to drive the earnings. And, and it's also scale. You know, once you've got it, once you've made the movie, you've spent the 200 million to make the movie or the 500 million to make the movie, that movie can make you a billion. It can make you one and a half billion. So the upside is there on a cost base that can be, remain fairly static. So that opens up the margins as well. Brian, you mentioned the capital expenditure, uh, which is very intensive and quite heavy. Then you're clearly not buying this particular stock for its dividend then. No. Um, this, as I say, they pay out only about 20% of their earnings. It's on a yield of just over 1%. And that's not likely to change in the near future. So it's very much a case you're buying this business for the expansion and for the growth in the earnings. So what can we expect in future? More merchandising, as you mentioned, content, Peter. Uh, and it looks like those resorts and theme parks are also something that's going to grow. Yeah, so taking that brand, A, expanding their product and product range, but B, to a bigger consumer market. You know, mm -hmm. so, so more people are paying for your movies and going to the theme parks and, and, and watching the, the channels. Mm -hmm. Should we also be v looking very cautiously and carefully as to uh, which markets they uh, diversify in? Like you mentioned, in South Africa, it's more the content, not the theme parks, uh, as well as on the African continent. So clearly, they're targeting markets where they know there's economic growth and people have the money to spend here. Very much so. Um, it's a business that's that they do their homework. Um, they're, not, they're not reckless with their spend. So they've done their homework. They know where the demand is and they're putting the money in there. Mm -hmm. On the management structure though, are we happy with the team that's behind this uh, particular company? You've still got Bob Iger in charge there. He's planning on stepping down. Uh, he mentioned 2016, 2017, but he's really has gone and developed a great succession and plan behind it and a good team behind him. So as much as he's the, the head, the legend, um, yeah. the legend um, you know, there is a great team behind it. And also just to, to keep in track that um, I think we're up to the third or the fourth generation of Walt Disney's grandson still sits mm. on the board or great grandson or great great grandson <laughs> um, <laughs> still is still in the board. So there is still this family connection there to the Walt Disney values of a family friendly business. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get that all important question answered now. Buy, hold or sell Walt Disney as a stock. Buy, hold, or sell Walt Disney? I have to own the share. I spent so much money on all their paraphernalia <laughs> and movies. I'm going to their theme parks in August. 
um, you kind of have to buy it as insurance, I guess. Mm. No, but jokes aside, I think it's got fairly expensive. Um, so I, I, I can't tell you with any certainty in the next 12 months you're going to make a massive amount of money out of it. But it's in our long-term portfolios. It's, you know, if you were to choose a long-term portfolio, it's certainly one of the first ones you would consider. Um, on a five-year view, it's a stock you want to own. Um, so, so buy, but not to race away short-term. No. Brian, you agree? Absolutely. You know, it's one of those that I think from the, the long-term perspective, they've got good growth forecasts into this business. You're going to see those returns come through. To day trade it, I wouldn't, but to, to put this into my portfolio, leave it alone, worry about it in the next five years is definitely one that I would. And you're not worried about the competitive landscape, I take it? There's not too many people that play in this space. Um, if you look at the, the whole package they've got, yes, you've got the different other movie houses. Um, some have great uh, blockbusters, others don't. Here you've got this business that's got very different aspects to it that continues to bring out um, blockbuster after blockbuster. So clearly there's more to Walt Disney than uh, Mickey Mouse and Goofy. As we hear from our experts, it's uh, a buy and certainly one for the long term. That's where we leave it for Talking Stocks this week. Do catch us again next time.